we can also classify matter according to its composition. Classifying things, like if you took a, a bowl full of buttons, you could sort the buttons out different ways. You could sort them by size and put all the large buttons here and the small ones there. You could sort them by the number of holes that they had. Some buttons have four holes and some only have two. You could sort them by color. And so we're just exploring different ways to sort matter or classify it. So another way is by its composition. So there are two broad categories, pure substances and mixtures. In a pure substance, we only have one kind of particle. So here is water. Water is a pure substance. All the particles are the same. They're all water molecules. In a mixture, eh, in a mixture, you've got two or more different kinds of atoms or molecules. I think there's a picture coming up. An element is a pure substance. The element is composed of atoms, and the atoms can't be broken down into smaller pieces. So, like, atoms are like the um, individual Lego bricks. And let's say you had a 2 by 2 or a 2 by 4 Well, let's draw it just for the heck of it. Come on. So, you've got a Lego brick. We have way too many Legos at our house because we've been collecting them for about 20 years. So there's a Lego brick, 2x4 Lego brick. Can you break that into a 2x2 two two Lego brick with your bare hands? You guys never played with Legos? You can't. It's a little piece of plastic, and it's pretty sturdy, and you cannot break those buggers with your hands. Now, could you take a hacksaw and cut it in half? Yeah, you could. You could take a hacksaw to it. But that's kind of being extreme. So when we talk about a chemical transformation, we're talking about playing with Legos with your bare hands. You can't break the bricks into smaller pieces. If you build a house, can you take the house apart? Yes, you can. But once you get down to the individual bricks, you can't break it down any farther. Atoms are like the individual bricks. They can't be broken down anymore. So when we have an element, it is composed of those atoms, and all the atoms are the same, and you can't make it into smaller things. All the elements are listed in the periodic table. We've got one on that wall. We've got one on that wall. And I also made you memorize a bunch of them. There are element symbols and their names. So those are the elements. Compounds are also pure substances. We saw that picture of water. So water would be a little bit like having a little Lego structure. OK, so this is the side view. Here's a 2 by 4 red Lego block. And then we've got a 2 by 2 blue one up there and a 2 by 2 blue one down there. Can we take that apart into blue and red bricks? Yeah, we can. It's a molecule. It's composed of atoms. The atoms cannot be made any smaller. We put atoms together into a molecule, but the molecules can be taken apart. A compound has two or more different kinds of Lego bricks in it, two or more different kinds of elements. And they're, com they're put together in a fixed proportion so if we made Lego water, all of our little guys would be this same funky shape. Maybe we just make a whole bunch of them, they'd all be the same. Just like in that picture with the little Mickey Mouse heads. All the molecules are the same. But they're molecules made of different elements. Compounds are more common than elements, and they can be decomposed into simpler substances. You can decompose water with a 9-volt battery. You could try that at home if you want to. Drop a 9-volt battery into a glass of water. You'll see bubbles. One of the terminals is giving off oxygen, and one of the terminals is giving off hydrogen. It's electrolyzing the water, breaking the water into its individual elements of hydrogen and oxygen.
but because it's a compound, we always have the same ratio. There's going to be two blue bricks for every one white red one. With water, you have two hydrogens for every oxygen. Always. Same ratio. A mixture is a little different. A mixture is going to have two different substances. Those could be two different elements. They could be two different compounds. It could be a compound and an element. They're mixed together. Um, they are not chemically united. So this is like, would be like taking red bricks and blue bricks and throwing them into a box together, but not making little things out of them. They're just thrown together. And you wouldn't necessarily have a two to one ratio of blue to red. It could vary. You could throw some extra red bricks in there. And when you look at the pieces, the pieces are different. You have at least two different kinds of pieces. When we look at water, all the individual molecules are the same. So here's a picture of two mixtures, air and seawater. So in the air, we have some elements like oxygen and nitrogen. There's also argon and carbon dioxide. When we look at these particles, here's the oxygen, and that one's different than the nitrogen. And you could have more or less oxygen or nitrogen. They're not stuck together. There's two different kinds of particles. If we look at the seawater, here we see those little Mickey Mouse heads, the little water molecules. But we've got other stuff in here too. We've got ions from the salt, with sodium ions and chloride ions and other types of salt ions. And there's a mixture. They're mixed together. They're not all the same. And then we, we, take the, we take the mixture category and break that down into two kinds, homogeneous and heterogeneous. And this gets into prefixes again. Come on. <coughs> Hetero and homo. Homo means the same. A homogeneous mixture is the same all the way through. A heterogeneous mixture has different parts. An example of a heterogeneous mixture, let's just do heterogeneous first, since that's where I am right now, oil and water. Italian salad dressing has oil and water in it. And you can mix it up, you can shake it, and it seems to be mixed up, and you set it down and you look at it, and the oil comes to the top and the water goes to the bottom. It doesn't matter how hard you shake it or how long you shake it, it's going to separate. It's heterogeneous. There's this top layer, layer that's oily and the bottom layer that's sour because it has the vinegar in it. It's heterogeneous. Macaroni and cheese. Chicken noodle soup. You've got the noodles and you've got the chicken and then you've got the broth. There's different parts to it. It's not all blended together. If you took the chicken noodle soup and you stuck it in the blender and you pureed it, then you've got more of a homogeneous mixture. Um, if we have, um, if we dissolve salt in water, the salt will dissolve in the water and it'll mix thoroughly and you'll have a homogeneous mixture. It's a mixture because you've got salt and you've got water. You could add more salt or less salt and the proportions are going to be different. But it's going to stay, it'll be just as salty on top as it is on bottom. So here's a nice graphic that kind of summarizes all of that confusing stuff. So here, matter. We can divide it into pure substances and mixtures. Pure substances, all the parts, the, the individual pieces are the same. So we've got, oops, we've got elements and we've got compounds. But when we go down to look at the pictures here, this is sugar, it's a compound, but all of the particles are the same. This, I think, is supposed to be copper, and all the particles are the same. You don't have two kinds of particles. But this is an element because there's only one kind of atom. This is a compound because there's more than one kind of atom. We could take this guy apart into hydrogen, oxygen, and carbon. This one cannot be taken apart into different things. You can just make it into smaller chunks of copper. The mixtures are going to have two different components. So here is an example of tea. 
with sugar in it. And so we have the water and we have sugar molecules. And they dissolve, and this is probably something from the tea. I don't know if that's caffeine or what that might be. But we've got the water molecules and we've got other molecules. And they're not all the same kind of molecule. But the tea, pointed at the wrong thing again, the, the tea is the same throughout. The top and the bottom are the same. The heterogeneous mixture is like oil and water. The oil goes to the top, the water settles at the bottom. And if we look up here, the oil has one kind of particle and the water has another kind of particle. And they're, but they're in the same container, so it's a mixture. So let's classify some things. Classify these as pure substances or mixtures, and then go one step farther and say if it's an element, a compound, or a homogeneous or heterogeneous mixture. So mercury in a thermometer, pure substance or mixture? Pure substance. Is it an element or a compound? It's an element. Now that might not be obvious. Well, mercury, that was on that list of elements I told you to memorize. So from that, you should know that elements, mercury is an element. Um, how about exhaled air? Pure substance or mixture? That's a mixture. Is it homogeneous or heterogeneous? Well, if you're blowing chunks, it's heterogeneous, but you're just exhaling. It's going to be pretty uniform. It should be homogeneous. Gases mix very, very quickly. And so it's hard to have a non-homogeneous mixture of gases, a heterogeneous mixture of gases, because they fill up their container. How about minestrone soup? It helps to know what minestrone soup is. That said soup, it's got vegetables and like garbanzo beans and kidney beans and noodles in it. That's a mixture, right? Homogeneous or heterogeneous? Heterogeneous. What would be an example of a homogeneous soup? Tomato soup. Cream of tomato soup has been all pureed and it's the same all throughout. How about sugar? Pure substance or mixture? That's a pure substance. And I would not expect that to be obvious. Element or compound? Compound. There's, there's no element on the periodic table called sugar. We may think of it as one of the food groups, but that doesn't make it an element. Um, so only the things listed on the periodic table can be elements. If it's not one of those, it cannot be an element. Now this question is a good one to go over in lecture. I, I wouldn't consider it to be a good exam question because several of these I would not expect to be obvious to a beginning chemistry student. There could be a question like this on an exam, but the... Uh, it'll be more obvious than these were. Okay, and I'm still in the same section. So this just kind of summarizes. Matter can be a pure substance or a mixture. Pure substance can be an element or a compound. A mixture can be homogeneous or heterogeneous. And mixtures can be any combination of atoms and elements.